guys, Trev again. Don't know if I can flip the screen, I'm no good at that, so we'll just turn it around. How you going? Cool. Okay, so a little update. Um, Rose gave us a hand and we did some more planting. So obviously these are um, all the plants we did the other week. Um, except obviously this little tree here, we've had that one for a while. And this one my, my father gave me. Um, and we've... We've got the Monsterio there, we've got our blueberry, and we've got some strawberries we're going to plant soon. And we've got a kangaroo paw, which is native to Australia, obviously, for those who are watching from other countries. Okay, so it's obviously the picture there, and it looks like a kangaroo's paw, hence why it's got its name. Okay, so it's only a small video. Obviously my little natives are still going over there. It's a little cool at the moment. It's just after three in the afternoon, so they've cooled off. And there's the dragon fruit and the other native plants. And there's our uh, orchid. And over the back, we've got some shallots growing and some parsley. And there's an avocado tree starting to flower pretty cool because I didn't think it would. It came from seed from a mate of mine. His daughter did it as a uh, experiment at school and then they didn't want it once the plant grew so he gave it to me. I put it in the pot see how it goes. Dragon fruit still going well. Okay these are called a desert rose. That one and this one. I got them from the local markets a while back uh, a couple of years ago. So they're slowly getting bigger. They're not flowers at the moment but they get a beautiful flower on them. Obviously our zucchinis are going well. Now it's been a couple of weeks. Rose has planted some lettuce in there as well. Probably could have spaced it a bit better. Still no good with the ginger, but it's only been in there for about a week. Potatoes, same thing. Peas are coming up, so I'm gonna make a little trellis for them. So there are gonna be um, like a snow pea, and then there's two types of dwarf bean are coming up quite well on the other side of this little bit of trellis. I moved them over here but I might move them and uh, make a separate trellis. I might put my little passion fruit back on this. And we have some spinach. I put in some pots. Separate them from little seedlings and that's the rest of the lettuce. And rose on a tomato. As you can see there. And uh, another native there and a little native there and another little native in there and then we've got obviously our sweet potatoes and we've got our lime that's flowering I think I showed this before so there's one lime here and there's one lime here and there's lots of flowers on it lots of flowers on the lemon which you'll see later in the video anyway the well lemon flowers um, now, I think this one, let me have a look, a uh, thing on here, I think this was a dwarf. Uh, I can't really see it now. I've got a feeling this one was the orange. I can't really tell. Uh, one's an orange and one's a mandarin, but anyway, they both have their flowers just starting on that one. And there, there's a few buds about to come out quite a few buds actually and then on this one whoops sorry a bit close some buds coming on there so they'll soon turn into flowers as well so I'll leave you with that and then I'll continue the video in a moment um, you might notice on my native bees I have different numbers on them um, this is for Queensland University they're doing a study on native bees so I'm helping them out there's a lot of us helping them out um, looking at how the bees actually make new colonies and whether or not they're bringing pollen in or rubbish out or um, if there's dead bees or if they're fighting or they're swarming. So we're just doing observations. Um, there's one down there on the ground. Uh, if you can see that, she's just crawling around. It's a bit cool in the afternoon. Well, I lost the bearings a little. So yeah, it's a little project from the Queensland University that we're doing. So all my hives have a registered number with them. And I just uh, have an observation with them for three minutes on each hive when it's a sunny day. 
and we just let them know, you know, if they're bringing in pollen or resin or nectar or if they're leaving with resin. If they're leaving with resin on their back legs, it means they're going to establish another colony somewhere. Um, hopefully these two won't because they're both eductions, which means the logs actually have the main hive and the other two which I have shown before inside is where they started making stores and making room for a new hive and they're going to go into there themselves. But, um, yeah, so, and that was the swarm capture I did. Um, not much activity now because it's quite cool in the afternoon as you would have seen. But, uh, I don't even think you can see them in the entrance on that one. No, nobody's home. Probably all inside for the night. So I'll probably leave it at that. Oh, and I also forgot a little passion fruit down here, which isn't going superly well, but it, uh, it's been in here for a few weeks, but something's been eating it, so I don't know how well this one's going to go. It's certainly not growing like the first one I had. The first one went like mad, but it was an orient it was an ornamental one and had actually no real fruit you could eat. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, and Rose also put another lavender plant over here with my other one, which my other two lavender plants aren't doing super good. They're getting a bit scraggly looking, so I have to clean them up. But yeah, you just put this one in. She put this one in and... It's a little picture of the lavender and uh, already had flowers so it should do quite well so yeah so just a few plants a little bit of the backyard and uh, I'll switch over to the other video now and you can have a look at the bees and at the end I'll have my brother's videos from where we had a look at his and I'll put some screenshots up of his uh, queen cells and stuff um, because his new hive has developed five queens um, so we'll see how they go. Sorry, I was just showing you the um, clover on the ground. So we kind of let the clover go for the bees. There's quite a few of them on there this morning, but uh, I've been out most of the day. So yeah, not a big yard, as I said, but we're going to make another one of these raised garden beds. Um, I've got it in the shed. I just haven't got around to, to building it. Um, just to give you an idea, this bottom section has... Um, uh, logs and bits of wood in it and actually this tree here when we trimmed it we took all the branches and that and all the leaves and we stuck them in there and then on top of that we put a whole bunch of uh, grass clippings and I put in bunches of cardboard just to fill it basically so probably up to about here which is probably about just on half to two-thirds of the um, of the garden bed is is you know wood and cardboard and bits of tree and everything and then there's some mulch and there's uh grass clippings and everything and then there's i think i put about four or four bags of garden soil and potting mix and um i also put some of the worm castings from our little worm farm and um then obviously mulched and then put our little zucchinis and that in. They're supposed to be chilies, but they definitely haven't come up. I can't even see like if anything's even started. Is a bit of green there? No, that's not it. So no, there's definitely nothing coming up on this side, but it should be chilies. But we'll see how we go if they come up. Um, so yeah, might have a quick look in the worm farm back in a tick. So my little worm farm, little rectangular one. So I've just got the meshy stuff over the top. So, you know, there's a few worms. Obviously all the veggie scraps and that go in there and tea bags and any old leftover stuff. You know, you can't put in things like uh, citrus um, or onions. Uh, apparently the effects of worms in some way and they uh, go a bit funny. Probably different in a compost, but in this situation, you know, even, no offense, there's some hair there. <laughs> and believe it or not, they'll actually break down your hair because I um, cut my hair and sometimes my wife's hair so it ends up in there as well so yeah it's just a little three tier system um, I'm about to rotate that bottom one out soon and use that in my next garden and then um, we'll move the, when this one gets moved out it'll go in the top with a bit of uh, potting mix and then we'll, um, we'll move some of the worms in there and we'll put some more of scraps and stuff in that should go well i've got a couple of visitors here looks like i've got a magpie up here on the roof of my shed 
Hang on there, Maggie. Having a wander around, probably thinks I'm gonna feed it. There's another one, they're just babies. Sort of a, a gray color. They're not the traditional white and black. It's got a little bit of gray on them. It's running away, doesn't really wanna be looked at that much. Hiding behind the tree, Oop, there she goes, around the corner. Cool, so, yeah. So, I've got uh, obviously just some other plants and stuff along here, which is just like my other bit of garden and greenery between the house and the shed. Cycad palms and um, I've got an orchid here. I've actually split that up. There's probably about 20 of those plants. You get a beautiful, beautiful flower on them. I'll hopefully get some footage of that. Um, also my elk horns. Kind of like a staghorn, but a little bit smaller. Don't have as big a leaves. These are called dancing lady orchids. They're um, they're very very pretty when they're flowering. And um, down this way, I've got obviously I've got um, aloe vera and stuff growing in there as well. And I've got my near sixty plus year old uh, fig, which is our bonsai. It's been going quite well. It's a new pot for it. I changed it out a couple of years back, or last year, and the year before. I changed it, it was in a swan, and I changed it to this more traditional type pot. And uh, some other orchids. There's more of those orchids that we separated. There's a rose there that actually came up on its own in here, this rose. We actually don't even know how it came up. It just popped up on its own one day. Some uh, cactus and succulents there, which my wife's planted. Different ones. There's some more crucifix orchid, which is a, another lovely little orchid. I've got purple and orange. I think I've got a pink and a red somewhere. Some more native plants out the front there, near the magpie. Another cycad there. I think it's a boab tree, I think it's called. I've got some orchids actually inside that tree, just sitting in top. Rose there, bit of a wild one. Oh, come over to say hi. How you going there? Hey, Maggie. More cycads at the front. So yeah, a couple more natives. Uh, this is a finger lime. It's a native Australian. It's uh, I haven't had any finger limes off it yet. They're um, supposed to be quite sweet. It's a wonderful plant. It's very prickly though. You've got to be careful. Definitely got to wear gloves with it. But, um, anyway, guys, I'll uh, I'll leave it at that, and we'll uh, move on to the rest of the B movie. So stay tuned. Hello, little bee. Collecting pollen from my lemon tree. Kind of hoping she's one of my bees. Oh, yep, there she goes, back into the hive. Not bad having a lemon tree right next to the beehive. You can slip around the other side here. Have a look. It's just after three in the afternoon on Sunday. So, not a huge amount of activity, but there's a bit here. A lot more activity on my brother's hive. Well, his two hives, because we split them a couple of weeks ago, and he has queen cells and all that, so I'll put all that in there too.
have to clean out the pest management tray because it's uh, full of uh, dead bees and pollen. Which we'll clean out shortly. So screen bottom board, the bees still do get through it. And they fall through dead. All the other bees push them through, one of the two. And it's all full of pollen. So I'll clean that out shortly. During the day, they're absolutely all over this lemon tree. They're having a time of their lives. Rather short video today. Just some bits and pieces. So I'll put my brother's bees on the end of this. It uh, might have some time lapse stuff in the some slow motion stuff. Sorry, I should say. And uh, well, she snuck down in there. Can't see her now. She's gone. Oops, sun's come out a little bit. Get back over to the entrance for a minute. Uh, thanks for dropping by. It's only a short video. Like I said, I'll put up my brother's stuff from today and uh, he has uh, some queen cells in his new hive see if I have some screenshots of that I can put up and then just some of the activity around the front of his hive so yeah it's, looks like his bees are doing quite well with these two hives and he did extract or harvest some honey today he took uh, two and a half kilos off one flow frame and he has three more frames that are almost ready. So he'll probably, depending on how they go over the next couple of weeks, if they're fully capped, he'll uh, harvest those as well. So yeah, mine are still going well, but nowhere near ready for harvesting yet. After all, it's only the start of spring here. But, uh, we'll see how we go. Well, I'll uh, let you enjoy my brother's bees. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. I'll put my brother's bees on after this. Thanks, guys.